is a significant mark of the quite remarkable growth of the company that there are many faces here which are new since our jam session of two years ago. And it is perhaps just worth recounting to you how it comes to be called a jam session, entirely in memory of a secretary whose uh, typing skills, uh, I'm afraid, were not quite up to her imagination and uh, succeeded in typing the whole of a series of uh, uh, slides uh, with JMA uh, su supplanted by the word jam. But jam sessions seem to be so much more lively uh, a way of describing what we should do when we uh, get together than a JMA conference uh, that that has been retained. And I hope indeed that uh, this occasion will be uh, no different as we've called Swart cast as the Bix Bidecker and uh, uh, Jim Martin as the Louis Armstrong. I hope we really can make it swing. <laughs> now, many of you will have come here, I know, by uh, car, and uh, you will have appreciated that there are two rather different skills that are required to complete such a journey successfully. Unless you know where you're going, and unless you have some skills in navigation and map reading, unless, in other words, you can get the strategic components right, you may travel far and fast, but to no effect. Equally, of course, it is vital to have those skills that enable you to stop and start and turn. Otherwise, your journey may easily end 100 meters from home, hard up against a lamppost that does not share your same sense of destination. Now, it is vital that we do preserve the distinction between those two key components of our business. But let us be quite clear, in this jam session, we are concentrating on the former, on the strategic issues, on where we are going, on the vision that we have for the 1990s. I shall be uh, addressing a few words on the immediate steps that we have to take that will take the company uh, at least to the first intersection on that route. But make no mistake about it, this company has achieved a very great deal in a short time. And it might be tempting just to look back and recount where we have got to. But that is uh, no more than the beginning. And what we need to recognize in those uh, well-known words of a US president, you may think we've done all right, but you ain't seen nothing yet. And what we are here to do on this occasion is to lift that vision and to take a view of what has to happen next. If we were a company in the information technology field that set that as its objective and wished to know how it might chart its course over the next five, ten years, and we were to seek an outside speaker who might give us that view, I suspect we would try extremely hard by any means available to us to induce Jim Martin to come and talk. I doubt if we would be successful. What is extraordinary about this occasion is that not only, of course, do we have Jim Martin to present that view of the future, but he is not merely presenting a view of the future for the technology and the industry in which we engage. He is presenting a view of the future of JMA, which is intimately associated with it and will play a part in that process of development. In a book shortly to be published, JMA will be described as an extraordinary company. Uh, extraordinary it is indeed, and I think much of that stems from the uh, extraordinary uh, breadth of vision uh, of, of Jim, and we are indeed absolutely delighted that he should be with us on this occasion, and we look forward uh, to getting a measure of that vision and where it is indeed taking us. I do want to uh, just identify one or two of the components in both where we are and where we are going before moving on to the first stages of the route map in how we get there. But we have, I think, uh, over the course of the last uh, decade or since the formation of the company at its beginning, we have put together the very powerful components for a solution to the key problems of system development that faces uh, major enterprises. What we have to do now is to refocus the company and to bring into a, a clear understanding the steps that are necessary to take us forward to meet those market needs in the 1990s, preparing on that base. And the market is needing both the strategic direction, which will indicate 
where it may go, and very considerable help at the tactical and implementation level. And we have to learn to address both of those components, building upon the strengths uh, that we have and have created uh, over recent years in addressing primarily uh, the implementation issues. We do, of course, have a word of advice to clients for whom we are trying to provide assistance in addressing these problems in their own organizations. We do uh, exhort them to look very carefully at their own business, at its nature, at what lies at the heart of it, and to express that in simple and understandable terms. It is a good idea to take one's own medicine. And when we examine what we are doing, the business that we are engaged in, there is one key word which I think leaps to the fore. We are in the knowledge business. We are doubly in the knowledge business because it is our purpose to provide that array of knowledge which help, helps business organizations and enterprises to handle and manage their own knowledge in a way which will effectively further their business objectives. So we're in it up to our necks. And perhaps if there is a theme to this jam session, it is really going to be concerned with that, how we take that key component of what we are seeking to do and make something much more substantial of it within the company. The first jam session set itself an objective of establishing, developing, and spreading the culture of JMA. A year later, there were five times as many locations for JMA as at the start. The last jam session set as an objective a concentration and a focusing upon profit. A year later, the company had generated five times as much profit as it had in the previous year. We're setting an objective on this occasion, which is to increase the array of knowledge that is there at the fingertips of all of us who work in JMA. A sensible objective for everybody, except I think it might present some difficulties for Jim Martin, but for the rest of us, that is an objective, and I confidently expect it to be achieved. It will be achieved if we focus upon it and recognize the fundamental importance of the three things that we can do with knowledge. The first thing we must do, and this perhaps is the theme song of what we are all about, we have to capture knowledge. We have to capture it so that we may use it, so that we may deploy it. The second thing that we have to do is to share knowledge. It is no good simply keeping it to ourselves. We must find ways of sharing and using it extensively. And finally, we must apply that knowledge. We must apply it to achieve the objectives of our clients and our customers. And so we have those uh, three key components which really sum up the nature of what our business is all about. But what I rather specifically want to identify to you at this moment because it lies at the core of what we then have to look at in terms of the way in which we structure and handle and manage this company. But all of us need to look at what we do in this field of knowledge in two distinct ways. We all have a job in the company, and that job is concerned with capturing and taking knowledge and applying it in a very focused and concentrated way to achieve objectives in the marketplace with our clients. And there, we need to look at the task in hand. We know, need to know and understand very clearly and very simply what our job is, and to do that. And that has to be one of the key objectives for the company, to define that and ensure that it happens. If we were a company that operated in a field where the technology was stable and well understood, where the organization structure was stable, where the growth rate was modest, it is quite probable that life would be a great deal simpler because we would just have a job to do. We're not in that sort of company. We are in a company which is exactly the converse. We are in the process of pushing back the frontiers of technology. We are changing what we are doing with great rapidity, and everybody is involved in that, which means we don't just have a job, we have a role. And if that makes life more complicated, it also makes life a great deal more fun. 
And what I would urge every one of you to do is to consider very carefully not just what your job is, but what your role is in achieving results across the company, in belonging to teams of those who know and understand and advance the technology in which we're engaged, and in the process of so doing, create the opportunities for tomorrow. What we are setting out to do in the JMA organization, and I shall move on uh, shortly uh, to identify the key objectives and strategies that we are pursuing in the way we are organized, is to focus upon these areas of expertise and knowledge and to focus them into business streams, into streams which will concentrate effort and energy and at the same time will enable that wide communication of skills and understanding. And those really are the two bywords. We have to concentrate on the job in hand and we have to communicate to ensure that the roles of advancing the knowledge that we bring to bear in this organization are, are well sustained. That does mean that we have to put considerable effort, and that will be a renewed effort, into the areas of development. And that will be focused both in the refinement and enhancement of that key methodology base, which enables us to tackle those vital issues of implementation where we have such considerable strengths. But it will also be focused upon you know, those areas which are concerned with bringing together focusing and transferring knowledge. And our new activities will be directed in that way. And the point that I wish to make most strongly is that that is the role of all of us to assist in that process, to be capturing, disseminating, and ensuring we can use that knowledge. And that really gives us our priorities for, for action. The focusing of those business streams, which starts in organizational terms, but must be carried through in the way in which all of us respond uh, to that uh, set of challenges. It means that we must devote a major part of our time and effort to this process of capturing and handling and managing uh, that knowledge base that we have. We need to develop uh, the concept of the consulting practices, which will be very much part of the enterprise engineering area which Sean Boyle uh, is heading up to achieve exactly that set of objectives. We will need to ensure uh, that we are able and willing to commit a significant development resource to the achievement of those objectives uh, as funded research. And those are the objectives that we have behind the organization structure which we're now addressing. So let me just in this final section take you through that start of the roadmap as to where JMA is going. And we should do that, I believe, in a classic form, well understood within this organization. You analyze, you design, and then you construct, and you do it in that order. So the first thing we have to do is to understand where we are as a company now, what sort of organization we are, what those strengths are, and to determine how we take that forward into where we want to go. Well, we do consist at present, and I'm looking really at the final stages of the last financial year, we could be analyzed as three key businesses, one operating in North America, where the characteristics are as follows. The significant fact is, of course, that we do not ourselves distribute and sell the information engineering facility in the States. That is the uh, role of Texas Instruments. We do, however, have a significant and growing and effective business in the implementation and the support of the IEF by providing IEF-related consultancy. We've also built a significant business in the strategic area, not directly associated with IEF, and we have over the last year established a very effective research and development activity uh, directed uh, towards the creation of products uh, that are relevant in this field. If we look now at the United Kingdom, we have a different pattern, an organization almost wholly focused upon achieving success with the information engineering facility. A merged operation of sales and consultancy, a substantial training function, and some significant research and development, but all, again, focused on those objectives. In continental Europe, we have 
again, an effective sales and associated support operation, but also a significant strength in the establishment and creation of a strategic and a telecommunications consultancy base and uh, a very useful research function. And so we get a picture of considerable energy and bubbling enthusiasm of many strengths growing in a variety of ways, uh, a testament, I think, to the imagination and enterprise of many individuals within the company. But it is not a coherent picture. It is not something which is focused. And if we are going to achieve the next major steps of growth, we have to decide what are the things that we wish to make grow. People have got to be in charge. Money has got to be devoted to it. We've got to know where we're going. And if you analyze the components of what we're doing, I think one can see the elements of where that may be defined. We have an IF sales activity, but handled in a different way in each of the three major markets. Partly, of course, as a consequence of the nature of the relationship with TI, which is indeed crucial to much of what we will do. We have very substantial IEF-related consultancy, but that too takes a different form, which reflects the different constituent elements in each of those marketplaces. We have a growing component of strategic consultancy. Vital if we're going to address that first strategic priority to meet the market needs that we have identified. But although that exists in the States and in continental Europe, we virtually have no such component operating within the United Kingdom. The greater part of the activity of the company has until now been focused on the IEF and on related business. But it is those other components that will give us the key to how we may grow and develop in the future. So what are the rules if you observe a situation like that? How do you decide to put it together? Well, you do decide it on the basis of where you want to be well ahead. You do decide what are the things you're going to focus time and attention on, and you put those together into your organization structure. And if we look at where we want to be in the future, it looks like this. We have three businesses and three activities in which we wish to engage. We wish to drive ahead strongly with the implementation with the IEF now coming into considerable and powerful strength in the marketplace. We wish to develop those strategic consultancy components under the general banner of enterprise engineering. And we wish to take that knowledge, that expertise, that understanding, and we want to package it and make it available and sell it. We are not engaged in research and development as an intellectual exercise. We do it to create product, to sell it, to create value in the marketplace. And you only do that if you have a focused business. It is also of crucial importance to this company that we are perceived in the United States as being a powerful North American company, effective and operating there. It is equally vital that in Europe we are seen as a strong and effective European company and I do emphasize European. We intend to be a full two years ahead of Brussels in identifying and seeing this as a common market. We do intend to see that we have that strength, and I think we've got some very considerable evidence of that strength gathered in this room today. So that's the vision. That's where we're going. But you don't get there overnight. And as we uh, know from our practices, getting there the process of transition, the process of putting together something that will make that happen means that there are certain steps that have to be taken, starting from where you are today. And where we are today is that we do have three operations, but within each of them, there is a powerful kernel of strength, of understanding, of expertise. That we will take and make the base for growing the new businesses. That will happen according to a specific timetable, with specific responsibilities. My purpose is to spell those out to you and to tell you where they take us over the next 12 months, but bearing in mind what that ultimate future objective is to be. For the packaged expertise business, we have established a division, and Ian Palmer, based in the United States, is in charge of that. His function is to create those products, to extend and develop the market in the United States, and then, at the next stage, not immediately, to extend that base into Europe. 
Stephen Isat operating within Europe is part of that team. And uh, the processes will take us forward over the course of the next year on a timetable which says, let's get cracking now, and that is happening, and you'll see evidence of it in what Ian has to say. By April, we'll have our plans for the extension worldwide, and at the latest in October, I expect to see that up and running across the company as a powerful new component of our operations. Enterprise engineering has its home and center of excellence in Europe, in CoreSwartz operation, in Amsterdam, and from there, it will extend again to link up with what is happening in the States and to create a powerful new business. That covers strategic consultancy, telecommunications, and also the non-specific generic uh, case implementation. Sean Boyle is playing the crucial role there in putting together the concepts and establishing a base in the United Kingdom. And we will, in that operation, establish that base now, create the worldwide plan by April, and take that across the company as a coherent activity over the course of the next 12 months. So that brings me finally to what is, at this point in time, the largest component of our business, and one that will generate the revenues that enable us to sustain and develop the others. This is one we simply have to get right. And that is the information engineering division, where the key strategy has to be to recognize that we must work as an effective and desired distributor for Texas Instrument, bound to them not by the nature of the contract we have, but by mutual dependence. We've got to be good, and we intend to be good. And being a good distributor means that you align with your supplier in a way that is mutually supportive. That is our policy, and that is what we are determined to do. We will so align with the activities with which TI is engaged in making IEF the premier integrated case tool in the world, that we will sustain our position through 1994, five years ahead, by virtue of that strength and not by virtue of any contractual arrangement. And that can be done if we set about it with the right determination. But it does mean a wholehearted process of alignment, and we all need to understand what that means. It means we align our sales messages and approach. We align our training and technical material. We align all of those things which are really concerned with the development of the product. We align our image, our literature, our presentation, and we align our organization. We have had some extremely fruitful discussions with TI along exactly that basis over the course of the last month. And the consequence of that is that we are, with a high degree of understanding with TI, aligning the organization structure so that we can get that strong and powerful sales and marketing thrust, which is crucial to achieve those objectives. What we have to do is to put together an organization that marries onto and maps onto what TI are doing, and which can work with them in a way where we contribute on a partnership basis as much as we take. That organization will be directed and run by myself. Clive maybe will handle the consultancy and the branch operations for the United Kingdom and Scandinavia, Northern Europe. CoreSwart is driving the activity for Central and Southern Europe. And Teddy Lozell is taking the function of product sales and marketing and will drive that across the organization so that we can both achieve our objectives and those of TI. Let us understand what the critical success factors are for this vital policy. They are first and foremost that we do have a controlled and directed and professional sales and marketing activity, that we make a contribution to and show a high degree of conformance with TI policies. The first fruits of that will be in your hands early next week. A statement of strategic direction for the IEF in response to the IBM announcement that is much the most powerful statement ever made about what the IEF is and where it's going. But I think the double significance of that document is that that document was substantially produced by our team in JMA, and that has happened here in Europe in very close collaboration with TI, but it goes out as the worldwide statement for Texas Instruments. That is the first fruits 
of collaboration and alignment. And that is going to be a powerful weapon, and it's the first uh, of many to come. Finally, of course, we do have to achieve sales, and achieve sales effectively. And that will be the fruit and the consequence of the other activities in which we are engaged. So what we have to do is to align our structure now, align our literature and our training activities during the course of the year. We will be engaged with TI in joint investment in Southern Europe to build faster our presence in those markets than we could independently. And uh, we will uh, be setting out to achieve joint control over the key sales and marketing activities uh, in the midst of next year. That is going to be a very powerful formula. I myself believe in the world of ICOs today, that combination is quite simply unbeatable. Now what this means when we add it all together is a very powerful set of objectives that mean a great deal for this organization. This is what we want to be, and this is what we are in the process of becoming a flexible world worldwide organization and a large one. We intend to grow at least as fast over the next five years as we've grown over the last five. It is an organization that must attract and retain the highest quality of professional people who are determined to make their mark and to achieve something which goes beyond the achievement of the objectives of a particular job. We want people who want to contribute something that is making a reality of what has been a dream in the world of information technology and we have it in the palm of our hands. To do that it must be focused on the business activities, it must address them specifically and with clear objectives. We have to achieve those financial objectives by ensuring that we create and manage and handle product. Our knowledge must be converted into product if it is to achieve that and much of our thrust will be directed uh, to that end. We have to address and meet the needs of the major corporations and enterprises across the world, and we have to establish through these processes a position in which we are perceived as a leader, as we should be in our field. All that is within our grasp, but what we have more powerfully, more effectively available to us than any other organization is the vision and the understanding as to what needs to be done and the part we can play in it. That vision comes from James Martin. And Jim is going to address us now on that vision for the future. Jim, you could not be more welcome than you are on this occasion. Jim Martin. <laughs>